Hello. That was my Greg Manel impression again. Uh, welcome to Live in the Shop. I think it's volume five. That was my guess anyways. This is Custom Sears. I'm your host, Rob, and your new defense against the dark arts. Uh, welcome back. Thanks for taking time to, uh, to grab a coffee and hang out with me in my shop. Um, assuming you have a coffee and assuming you're actually here. As always, um, there, there is a chat box at the bottom right. Feel free to type in any questions or comments and I'll do my best to get to them as I go. Um, got something a little interesting I might want to show you later if you're willing to stick around. But uh, hey, there's people tuning in. How's it going? How's it going? Hey. Um, there were a couple people on Facebook that asked some questions. Maybe they can't be here and you're watching this after the fact. It's not live. I thought I'd do my best to try to get to you as well. Uh, a couple of questions and, and things to address uh, from a professional lightsaber designer builder to the world out there. Uh, I was going to ask you about uh, pricing for send-in services for upgrades, turnaround time, what your workload is like for commissions. Um, I mentioned this in one of the other videos. I only do work on sabers that I have built. People can't send their sabers into me to do work on. Uh, I just there's just too much. There are lots of other people out there that can help you with that. You could go to fxsabers.com. It's a forum we used to all hang out on. There's a section called the Mining Colony. Um, you could get some sabersmith there to help you. There's also Jody from Oceanic Saber Armory, who I've met in person. You can look up Oceanic Saber Armory on Facebook. He might be able to help you out. He's one that I've referred some work to in the past. Um, in terms of workload, I will allow people to send in older sabers that I have made to me for upgrade. Um, and it depends on how busy I am, price depends on how old they are, how much work is involved, stuff like that. And feel free to email me for details if that's you. Um, what tools and tricks have you learned on milling and lathing hilts? My lathe, maybe I'll show you another time, is 100, literally 100 years old. Um, I am by no means an expert machinist. I am a hack and uh, I've learned enough just to be dangerous, but my role is really just to play. And as I've mentioned before, as a designer, when you play and you create and you make mistakes and you learn things. Now, I don't want to learn, make any mistakes like the Adam Savage finger mistake or getting a necktie caught in a machine kind of mistake. Um, but what I want to do is I want to just learn how to do things. So I will make prototypes or parts and then once I make them, I'm happy with them and I can play with them and work with them, then I will get, um, I'll make designs for those parts and they get machines so they're precise. I'll also use my machines to modify uh, parts and, and modify things like MHS parts from the custom shaver shop uh, in order to get my stuff. So I'm not going to comment really on tricks and specifics because I'm not a machinist and you can go look up on YouTube and there's a ton of really cool, really cool instructional videos for um, tips and tricks. Someone asked, uh, how are we handling with the Corona stuff? Like I mentioned before, I work alone. I love working alone. I'm an introvert. Really the only difference for us is our kids are home from school. So my wife's homeschooling and, uh, and that's been a major change. But other than that, uh, we live in a small town. Everything's pretty hunky-dory. We're just waiting this thing out, hoping that everyone else is doing the same, staying home, staying safe. Um, it's going to be a, a rough spring here, but we'll get through it together and be better on the other side. Uh, I'm reading some questions. Qui-Gon, Padawan Hilt will look like. Oh, that's a good question. Qui-Gon, Padawan Hilt? I don't really know. Um, someone else asked about Blinky the pegboard. Blinky the pegboard has half died. The Christmas lights that I used to string in the back, half of them died out. So I, I just never plug it in anymore until I can tear the whole thing off the wall and redo it, which I don't know when I'm going to do Blinky. You can look up Blinky the pegboard in the Mad Cow Shop Secrets or do, no, it's, I think it's in your do it, do it yourself playlist on my YouTube channel. Um, what's your favorite customization to do to a saber? Mike asks, for example, etching crystal chambers. You know, I, I don't know if I have a favorite. I just get, I get in a mood sometimes where I really like to do cool etching or design new stuff. I get in a mood where I really want to make an intricate crystal chamber that does something a little different or looks particular, like maybe super weathered and old or using different types of materials. Like, um, you know, there's always the shiny metal, copper and brass. Sometimes I, I use translucent plastics 
Um, there's actually another mystery component I'm going to try to add to the next one, which I'm not going to tell you about until I do that. So I don't know if I really have a favorite. I just kind of, as an artist, it's just whatever kind of the mood, the inspiration, where it leads, you know. You get on about something and you're really fixated on it for a while until you can achieve what you want and you, you're happy with it. It's a really cool process, but it changes. Um, are you partial to trans white blades or clear with strip diffuser or for NeoPixel? Um, it's a good question. Two different blade technologies. Well, not really technologies, but um, hey, I see that's what she said. I see your question and I'll get to that later. Um, trans white clear blades for the look. Um, but when it comes to NeoPixel, I find that the trans white blade does two things. It helps to diffuse the pixel so you don't get that what's called corn cobbing effect where you actually see the pixels where it looks more like a, a line. Um, trans white blade helps to do that. Also, the transition from the NeoPixel tip, which has a hole drilled in it so the pixels can illuminate the tip, the transition from tip to blade looks much better with a trans white blade for NeoPixel. Um, that's not an issue with the traditional. So for Tri Savers, my standard blade is clear with film rolled in. For NeoPixel, my NPX2 blade is trans white with the, you know, the cool tip, all that stuff. Um, excellent question. Uh, let's see, another question here. Uh, your overall design aesthetic, John asks, is always so beautifully clean. Thank you, John. Uh, who are your influences when it comes to your general sense of design? Uh, someone else asked about uh, my uh, design influences from Skyrim, noticing the Nord Steel pattern, which you know is coming along. I'm still working on that. That's uh, it's kind of the Nord Steel etching pattern that I uh, did, inspired by the Nord Steel of Skyrim. Uh, I also there's a couple of things in Skyrim that kind of inspired me. The one I don't have a photo of it, uh, but a saber I did uh, a few years ago called Crate Fang. It's got a fang, a crate tooth at the end. Um, I used the labyrinthian um, ancient carvings on the labyrinthian mask altar from Skyrim as inspiration for that. Some kind of like an old, old archaic cave drawing kind of um, kind of imagery that I really thought was cool for an old saber. Um, really, you pick, pick up inspiration all kinds of crazy places. The, the odd, oddest things. I mean, Skyrim was one. Um, sometimes in other science fiction. I really like some of the etching from Sauron's gauntlet um, in the original Fellowship of the Ring, that, that pre that pre-cut scene where you see him holding the, the big mace and you see the ring on his gauntlet. Um, I have my gauntlet style etching, which I also have here. It's a peak of something that's coming for May the Fourth Be With You. Um, that inspired a pattern that really doesn't look anything like Sauron's gauntlet, but I've got what I call like a kind of like an ancient wills pattern. So you've got you know dark side. Sorry, dark side, where is it? With the little dark side spiral, light side, and then kind of you know interlocking shapes in between. That kind of really inspired by Sauron's Gauntlet from Lord of the Rings. So there's other inspirations you just pick up wherever. I think the trick as an artist is just to recognize them. Hey, that's really cool. I don't know what it is about that, but I want to spend some time thinking about it and sketching it, playing with it, and seeing where that could go. Um, inspiration, when it strikes, you need to, you need to go with it. These are good. Um, someone else, Jake, <coughs> excuse me, asks, any special May the 4th teaser that you want to throw out? As a matter of fact, yes. I alluded uh, last, in one of the previous live videos, that I would have, hopefully, a new Sabre design to present on May the 4th. And uh, I have now confirmed that the parts work, the Sabre works, the tests have gone well, I will, in fact, have 10 special sabers from a brand new design. Well, I don't know if you'd call it brand new exactly. See what I mean. You might remember this saber. That is ten, this is almost 10 years old. Nine years ago, I presented my vision for the Corin Horn um, lightsaber that was designed from a speeder bike throttle assembly and some other uh, fighter parts and other things um, based on what was available at the time. And it's always... Kind of like, I feel like George Lucas, it's always kind of haunted me, you know, if I could do that again, if I could do it a little differently, what were my limitations 10 years ago? Well, please welcome Speeder. This is brand new design. 
um, you'll notice right away that there is a lot of similarities and things that are carried over from the original corn horn speeder design. But this design is called speeder. Uh, you got a beefier pommel. Uh, I'll show next week. I'm going to do a video and some really cool pictures, so you'll be able to see everything. I just want you to see the similarities. This is designed like the Ascend and the Creed, a one-piece body with a thread-on emitter, collar, um, and it's loaded and ready to go. And uh, this is a really cool and fun saver to play with. And so I'm going to actually do up 10 of these. Well, I haven't done them yet. I'm going to sell 10 spots on May the 4th be with you uh, for these brand new speeder. It's the name I'm going with. Um, savers. This one is Neo Pixel. So you lock in a NeoPixel blade and, of course, the traditional silver blade for uh, for Cornhorn. Um, of course, I don't don't want to that's my pipe dream. So, uh, so yeah, there you have it. You heard it here first on live that the uh, the new hilt, the new fun solid hilt is going to be um, it's going to be available. I'm in, I'm going to do I don't know it's a price that's probably a little bit more elevated than what the production series saber that is gonna be when I finally get around to that. I'm gonna to have to get a large run, bring the price down. That might even be next year. I finally get around to actually having these as a regular stocked item on the on the website. They probably won't have the copper um, and maybe some of the weathering. I don't know if you, you caught, I've used my kind of my new aging and weathering techniques. So the pommel is kind of weathered shiny. And these other parts as if they're from something different are weathered uh, differently. The, the glam picks that are coming, You'll see, see what I mean. Um, but that's, I'm really excited about that, guys. Um, so I don't know who the 10 people are that are going to get in on this early, um, but I really hope when the focus um, came out and there was a capability of doing spectrum. spectrum so you could change the blade color with the throb motion. I mean, that just right away made me think of Cornhorn and the, uh, the throttle assembly from a speeder bike. So, I mean, you can see the kind of, it's, it's not designed to be a replica of a speeder bike from Endor handlebar. That's not what I was going for here. What I was going for was a vision of some other speeder bike, the junk speeder bike handle, handle, throttle assembly, and yet beefy Bomo, which Michael Stackpole described in I Jedi when Corrin Horn constructed his lightsaber. And then the if you know the the parabolics aperture flashback suppressor from a from a fighter um, you know to, to, to finish the design. That's kind of the imagery that I was going for, for and, and using that with available pieces to, to construct this, my vision for Cornhorn's lightsaber. So there, there's some exciting news. I'm going to sit back and take a breath. I'm just so excited. I don't know if you can tell, but I was kind of going for the old man Logan. Need a haircut. I was kind of going for the old man Logan do. Anyways, so fire away. Any questions? None coming in, so everyone is staggered speechless by the announcement. For weathering, for those 10 sabers, yes, they're going to come probably very much the same as that. So they're going to be weathered. They're going to be kind of my vision for the for the saber. Um, you selling that? Yes. So uh, you inspired fire vine patterns since you were describing other Oh, what inspired the fire vine pattern? Um, I don't have that handy here. Firevine pattern I've used on several different sabers, originally on a bad axe. Um, I was kind of going for an elven, again, Lord of the Rings, kind of elven flowy. There's been powerful imagery in my life and background um, for the combination of growth representing like represented by a vine and, and the path and inspiration of a fire. And so I wanted a vine that kind of flowed in between flame and traditional vine growth and just something that kind of went with that. So that was kind of what I was thinking. Those are kind of, I guess, three influences when I did my fire vine pattern. Um, and that's why sometimes a lot of these are expensive is that I'm not taking some image off the internet and slapping a pattern on a saber and etching it. A lot of these are my artwork that's gone into this. Um, so it's something different than just slapping a pattern on a saber. Um, I've worked a lot to try to, you know, for originally I, Originally, the Firevine pattern was only for the Bad Axe until I modified it to work with the Ascendants, things like that. Do you machine your own switches, like the metal circular? Top? Yes and no. I use uh, 
there's a particular part that I use, a brass part that I machine down to be a switch cap that will then thread on a switch. Most of the time I use stuff that I can purchase and just use for, for time and efficiency. Have you ever had any design ideas for a Millennium Falcon Sabre or Han Solo inspired Sabre? No, um, although I have tinkered with some Millennium Falcon sounds when I was building, and again, you can check the playlists for do-it-yourself projects. I turned a Millennium Falcon toy into an operation game, which is super fun to play with. Um, and I, I, I kind of started a Millennium Falcon sound font that I never finished when I was doing that. So that's about as far, far along as I've gotten in that regard. These are great questions. You guys are just really doing an awesome job of just firing some things at me. This, this whole experiment of live in the shop would have gone pretty flat and pretty dead without these spectacular questions, many of which that I have missed. My deepest apologies and sympathies. Um, so yeah, keep them coming. Is there any other here that I didn't get to besides the obvious, like helping hands, soldering iron, wire strippers, etc. What are your top five tools or equipment that makes Saber Smith life easier? Brett asked this. Great question. Uh, I don't know if I have a top five to offer you. Um, I I can tell you though that recently I got one of these uh, based on a uh, an Adam Savage recommendation tool recommendation video. And uh, it was about 20 bucks on Amazon and it's a wire stripper and you stick the wire in, you set kind of the depth and, and it kind of adjusts automatically to whatever gauge wire. Um, I've had to do a little bit of finicking because with 28 gauge wire, which I use for some things, it's pretty fine. And sometimes it can take off a couple of strands of wire with the insulation, which you do not want. Um, so I've had to kind of up a little bit. And I was using, sometimes I just like the feel of traditional strippers, but for instance, Recently, I injured my thumb. This thing was a lifesaver to, especially if you're doing like, you know, 300 wire strip ends in a day, uh, your fingers are so sore. And uh, this has been a, a real lifesaver. I, I don't even know what it's called. This is a the brand name Tuzu. It looked like a bunch of different cheap brand names and I just had to pick one that had good, good feedback and go with it. Um, that's been a really cool and helpful tool, especially if you're doing a lot of wire stripping. Um, so that's, that's one that I can throw up. Uh, there was a couple of questions that I missed. I'm trying to remember one of them I made a note of, and now that note is gone, as happens with my mind. Uh, have you ever thought about a proprietary soundboard? So you say there's like a... Um, no, I have not thought about producing my own soundboard or using any other than Plector for the simple reason that I have a... Relationships matter to me. And I have a long relationship with Irv at Plector Labs. And I have been really happy with all the products that they've come out um, and with the input that he's allowed me to, to give um, in the process. And so because of that, that reputation, um, I would rather be, become an expert at the Plector Labs soundboards than diminish my ability with that in order to add other soundboards. So really, I kind of look at Collector Lab soundboards as my proprietary soundboard. It's the wrong use of the word proprietary, but they're my exclusive go-to uh, soundboard for savers um, and will be for the foreseeable future just because they're so excellent. I love them. Um, of course, everyone's got a different opinion and you're entitled to it. Good questions. There was another one there that I missed too. So let's see, that's all my... Do, do, do. Yeah, I think I got them all. Excellent. 20 minutes, maybe we'll wrap up early. And I'll go put something on the barbecue or something. I don't know about what, what it's like where you are, but it's actually starting to feel like spring here. And as of today, the last of the ice, because snow packs down and becomes ice, the last of the ice we finally got, we've been chopping it away and trying to get it into the sun in the backyard. Last of the ice is gone in the backyard. It's not hot anymore. Do you make sabers in batches? or all, uh, all the way to completion. Um, again, if you ask a long question, I won't be able to read it in time before it disappears and I may not answer it. Uh, I do both. I make single one-off sabers. I also do sabers in batches. With my production series sabers, I do my best to do them in batches as orders come in. So I get the parts CNC machined. Uh, I get other parts made. Uh, a lot of the work is prepping parts, prep, you know, attaching wires to switches, laying them aside, 
uh, getting the, the LED modules all wired up or the NeoPixel uh, PCBs, uh, speakers, everything. So I get all stuff prepped. That's a lot of work. And then when it comes to the final assembly of the savers, I'll do them as orders come in. So if I look through my orders and go, okay, there's a ascend, ascend, vector, ascend. I'll do those three ascends, do those as a batch, have them ready, then look down, okay, there's three vectors, four vectors, maybe do three or four at a time. Um, final assembly, you know, three or four sabers. Any tricks to make sabers louder? Yes. Uh, look up resonance on saber forums. There's been a lot of discussion over the years about how to properly attach and mount a speaker into a saber so that you get the most out of that speaker. Um, so that is one of the major contributors that a lot of people don't think of. You don't just slap a speaker in a saber and fire it away. You can do that. You're, you're getting accidental resonance and start, instead of experimenting and learning what the speaker needs and hearing it and maximizing your resonance. Um, having, uh, having said that, there's also, I bristle a little bit being an audiophile against louder versus clearer and better. I tend to default to clearer and better. I want the sound fuller. I want it real. Um, louder generally means forget the bass, forget the treble, all mid-range, all the maximum hearing peaks, and you just want it to cut through the noise, which I understand if you're at a con or something, there's a lot of ambient noise and you want your saber to cut through. I, I get that. But generally, I want it to sound, I, I want realism. I want it to sound as full as possible. And often, the un uninitiated, I'm going to sound like an expert snob here, the, the people who aren't like me, um, how's that for being political? Uh, the people who aren't like me don't care the difference between, they just want louder. They don't, they don't see any value to the fuller sounding. That's not what they want. It, people value different things. So, um, yeah, all that to say, yes, you can you find ways to make your saber louder. Um, it may not be ideal. Um, things I love about Plector Labs products is that uh, Irv at Plector Labs also sees things like me and he wants better, clearer. That's a value. So things are designed with that in mind. You, can you push the volumes louder? Can you max the app? Can you, you know, get it louder? Well, you probably could, but you'd be sacrificing clarity. Don't want to do that. So I don't know if that answers your question or confuses you or gives you more things to think about. How's that? There was another question there too that I, I missed. It looked interesting. Um, what's your thoughts on Saber staffs? Uh, favorite ne NeoPixel blade effects. My thoughts on Saber staffs are uh, many and varied. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. I don't. I don't like making them. I don't like using them. Um, they were cool back playing Jedi Academy, and you could have a Saber staff and be Darth, kind of Darth Maul style fighter, which was cool. Um, but it's just not not really a favorite thing of mine. Um. Uh, NeoPixel blade effects. I, I'm a I'm a purist, and what that means is I tend to like simple, true, high quality as opposed to flashy. That just is in, in everything in my my cars, my my music, my you know a lot of things. I'm just a purist in those kinds of things. So when it comes to lightsabers, I want a lightsaber effect that looks like the films, looks like the screen. Um, so that there's a new one uh, that Plector Labs has added, like a screen flicker, like a movie flicker effect that uh, simulates a movie flicker differently than the traditional flicker, which I think is kind of cool. I also like uh, some of the unstable, um, you know, what you can do with them. Uh, generally, I didn't like the rain sizzle little effect, but for some blades, like a Corrin Horn Silver, um, you can't really see it uh, on the camera right now, but you get these little uh, flashes of a slightly altered color. So, um, for a silver, which I, if I ever meet Michael Stackpole, I'm going to ask him, what were you thinking when you said silver? What were you envisioning? Like a bluish white? Um, don't really know. So I just kind of go with like a bluish white and then with those flickers in, silver. I think it's cool. Um, there's also the flame effects, like the rainbow effect or recording, whatever you want to call it. Lots of effects. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into it in detail in this video because um, it would be more fun if I had things to prepare and things to show. So maybe another time go into that a little bit more. But all that to say, uh, if you get a Crystal Focus Saber, uh, you can read up and learn how to experiment with, uh, if you're set, if you're set up for Bluetooth or plugging in the cable, uh, USB to your, to your computer, which is the way I do it, and then just try stuff and try different settings with the different um, blade profiles and just see what it looks like.
Very cool. Any other questions? Crickets, I'm slowing down. I should have had a snack, you know? Should have had some kind of snack. I feel like I'm fading a little bit. Do you ever have that in the afternoon? Coffee time, your work's done, it's kind of getting close to quitting time. What's your favorite book of the Bible? That's great, completely out of left field. I love it. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite book of the Bible. I love the Bible. I mean, I love the whole thing. I mean, just the idea that something's been around for thousands of years and people have fought and died for the right to actually have one. And empires have tried to wipe it out. And just this, the epic story of the fact that it's God's word is, is a huge deal. Uh, favorite book? People are suggesting Genesis from the name, creation, creativity, art. Yeah, well, Genesis obviously is an epic story of my favorite artist. Um, but there's a lot. Like, I, I love the stories and the history in the Old Testament. I love the, the teaching in the New Testament. So I don't know if I have a favorite book of the Bible. It's a good question, though. Uh, any other completely out of left field questions? How long is it going to be before someone asks me where babies come from? <laughs> I'm not going to handle that. You can ask someone else. I'm not going there. Yes, I know. I do know. I actually know where they come from. The stork. Yeah. This is, this is, this is the potential to devolve really quickly, depending on what questions come up next. I just feel like there's a whole bunch of people just like trying to type the most ridiculous thing they can right now in any second. I'm going to get hit with a stream of like, whoa. Or I could be just imagining the whole thing. I, I don't know. Uh, favorite character in Star Wars. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, what did you think of Kathleen Kennedy? I, I feel like that's a bit of a loaded question. I don't know how you intended it, but um, I have ranked all the Star Wars films, by the way. I can address that in a minute. I don't, I don't know if I have an opinion of Kathleen Kennedy. I really don't. I mean, I have opinions of the product. But I don't really know as a leader how she's done because I've never been in a staff meeting with her. I've never interacted with her. So I don't, to me, that face-to-face -face matters because I don't know if you're aware of this, but things that are said about people can often be untrue. And so I really try to not judge people without really knowing them. Um, so I don't know. I don't have an opinion on Kathleen Kennedy. I really don't. Uh, I have, like I said, I have lots of opinions on the films. What's my favorite? I I, I love the, the old school films. I love Empire Strikes Back. That's my top, always will be my top. I also love Rebels. I love what they've done with it, the Ralph McQuarrie art. I don't Clone Wars for a lot of reasons. I mean, the, the, the stuff they're putting out now is kind of like, I'm hoping, I'm hopeful more that it's going to blend into Rebels and The Mandalorian, which I also love. Um, so they're on one side of the spectrum. And some of the expanded novels I love, others are just waste of paper in my opinion so you really got to find the good stories I don't know, i'm not going to go into detail there and i just missed a whole bunch of those probably loony questions so thanks for asking a legitimate straightforward question that i could answer while ignoring what i may have been who knows what i missed i'll go i'll look back and have a good laugh over whatever was just asked i may see some of it pop up when the next question comes because i don't know if you're aware of this when you ask a question i can also see the one that was just before it so it's kind of mental gymnastics, trying to piece things together. Um, what is your favorite candle? Yeah, that's pretty random. Are you excited about Ahsoka in The Mandalorian? Ha! Ah, no! No, I'm actually not. I don't like Ahsoka's character. It's, not nothing, it's nothing to do with the female. I don't know whether it's just the whole introduction of this kind of like teen cheerleader Jedi. I just never, never got... You know, never got that. And then when they added her in Rebels, I'm like, oh, really? It's more Ahsoka? Okay, fine. Fit okay in Rebels. The role she played in Rebels. Um, uh, but I'm thinking, why can't we just be done and move on to other characters? Oh, I would rather them add in like a Corrin Horn or, uh, you know, or Luke or somebody, ex you know, in the time period that from, we're familiar with of post-Return of the Jedi. Uh, I would rather add them into The Mandalorian than bring back Ahsoka just for the heck of it. Um, yeah, people have all kinds of different opinions about Ahsoka, and you're welcome to them. Um, the fight scenes in the recent film stuff of the Siege of Mandalore have been great. Uh, do you think we'll ever get a Mara Jade? Ah, oh, you know what? I would love to have seen Mara Jade. What an epic character. But here's my thought on this. From a, from a cinematic culture, pop culture viewpoint, okay, stand way back, 
Just put your pop culture hat on, not your Star Wars hat. Mara Jade, in a lot of ways, has already been done. And she's called the Black Widow. If you go back and watch the Marvel films and the character of Natasha in the Black Widow, the facial expressions, the demeanor, the sarcastic sense of humor, the, just the, 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 the kick butt, take charge when it counts and do it with a quip kind of personality, that's Mary Jade. In my opinion, whether it was intentional or not, Marvel and Scarlett Johansson took Mary Jade's character and basically ran with it as Black Widow. Now, I was never a fan of the comics. The, I don't know what Black Widow's character is like if you read them in the comics. But I think Black, Mary Jade's been done really well as Black Widow. So, I mean, if they did Mary Jade, just bring in Scarlett Johansson and just get her to do more of the same. Yeah, I, I would be cool with that, actually. I think that could be a really good Mary Jade. I don't know off the top of my head any other actress who could... I know there was... um. Who is the Molly Molly Quinn? Is that her name from Castle, the TV show? Uh, she apparently was a big Star Wars fan. Wanted to play Mary Jade. I'll never be able to unsee Black Widow as Mary Jade now. I know, right? Um, if you could write and direct, uh, oh, I missed it. Wait, if you can direct, oh, I have to ask that again. I don't know. If I could write and direct, I would. Did you play uh, Fallen Order? No, I have not played Fallen Order yet. I would like to, but I'm reluctant to spend eighty dollars. Uh, hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, so here's someone asking a very long question that I'm trying to read quickly. And at the end, they, the word Kodor. So I don't know what your question was, uh, but yay, Kodor. I think Knights of the Old Republic, K-O-T-O-R, Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, the original game was brilliant. Drew Carpetian, the author, um, was great stuff. I think doing something completely off the map in terms of Star Wars would be a great way to go. Um, it's on sale, actually, someone mentioned. Yeah, I have to check that out. Have you ever seen the redo of the Obi-Wan versus Vader battle from A New Hope? Yes, I have. There's some great fan films out there. One of them is that remake of um, what if Obi-Wan fought Vader on the Death Star as Old Man versus Vader um, with kind of modern fighting skills and, and, and visuals. And it's, it's brilliant. The other thing that you may not have watched recently, which is brilliant, is someone's done a, um, a new, new involving uh, prequels, sequels, Rogue One. Uh, and uh, No, they didn't use Solo. Um, Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins music video with X-Wings, which is awesome. I've watched it like once a day with my boys probably for a week. Um, if you could write and direct any Star Wars movie, what would you? What would it be about? <laughs> you know, I kind of had this idea of uh, almost like a... And this is before they announced that they were working on what was called Star Wars 1313 or The Underworld, which is they used some of the visuals for the, the Clone Wars. But I kind of thought, okay, so Mace Windu gets his hand cut off uh, as lightsaber goes flying out the window of the palace on Coruscant, where did it go? Let's say it found its way to some crevice in the undercity of Coruscant. And years later, some force-sensitive, in my mind, boy, was drawn to this lightsaber and picks it up and begins a journey of, of self-discovery in the force guided by the discovery of this lightsaber that was once Mace Windu's. I thought that would have been a really cool story. So any filmmakers out there, or Kathleen Kennedy, if, if you're watching, I humbly submit my idea. Um, really though, I'm not a story inventor, teller kind of guy. I'm more the guy you would pitch a story to and I'd say, okay, here's what you need for a prop. It needs to be this, it needs to have this feel, it needs to have this look. That's, that's what that would be. Um, where do you think the future of Star Wars movies is headed? I have no idea. Um, in the short term, there's going to be more Baby Yoda. I can almost guarantee you that. They're going to take any little thing that the fans latch on to currently and run with it. Dark Saber, there's going to be more of that. Um, yeah. More Mandalorian culture. I just hope they do it well, you know. Um, don't know if that answers your question. These are some great questions that have kind of come in. Thanks for joining us late. For those of you that are late to the party... Guess what? Corn horns coming back. Speeder design. Very excited. Uh, what? I'm going to use the premium speaker in your sabers. Excellent question. Um, I, years ago, I switched from the premium speaker to the bass speaker. And uh, what I have found recently is that sometimes with the bass speaker, on really hard impacts, like if you drop a saber on its pommel, 
in some cases, the speaker will break. Not all cases. Um, and there, even though I was gluing and reinforcing them, um, it would still happen periodically. Never happens with the premium speaker. So, uh, so I've moved back to the premium speaker. So any saber that you've gotten from me over the last months has the premium speaker. And, uh, and that's probably the way I'm gonna do it going forward. Um, there was a couple other questions that I missed. I'm gonna wrap this up pretty quick. Should the new film Star Wars be set hundreds or thousands of years post Rise of Skywalker? What's your opinion? Uh, there's certainly, there's not been a lot written, if anything, from that era, post Skywalker era, like thousands of years post era. Um, so really you could go anywhere with it, which I think would be great to give the new writers a blank slate that's not a tie to the Star Wars expanded universe. I would rather see the history, um, the Sith War, the Mandalorian War, the eras of the Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic, prehistory of the Jedi. Uh, I would love to see that align with the Star Wars expanded universe. Um, doesn't seem to be happening. Uh, your Nano Scotty blows all your speakers. Are there any better brands? Um, I don't know what your speakers are mounted like. I don't know what your residence is like. I don't know if you're using really crappy sound fonts, so I can't say why your speakers are blowing. Um, generally, Nano Scotty 4 is not going to blow speakers unless something, something's wrong somewhere in the picture. Um, favorite looking visual Star Wars content? Oh, man, I could go on forever. Visuals? Um, the Viper Probe Droid from Hoth, love it. Visceral, just reacted to that and just instantly when I saw it when I was 11 years old. Um, even like the Sand Crawler, just a beautiful design. Uh, I'm actually, the new X-Wings, the, uh, the X or the T-70 is growing on me. Um, always love the Falcon. I mean, there's, that's one of the things I didn't, other than the T-70, there's really not a lot in the new films of cool ships that I really like. All the new ships are kind of meh. In my opinion. Uh, do I read Star Wars comics? I never, never did. Um, I, way back in the day when I designed my Bane Saber, based on the description of Drew Carpetian in the novels of a curved saber, I butted heads with people that said, no, the Bane Saber is a straight two-handed thing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, from the comics. I'm like, comics. Pff. I just, I've never been a comic guy. So, sorry if you are. I hope I haven't thoroughly offended you. Um, this is a test of your character an ability to extend grace to me and still be friends. Uh, does the CS, uh, custom saber shop sell black and gold metal skies? I don't know, I don't work there. They're like 13 hours that way. Um, Corrin Horn one more time. All right, as we're, as we're headed out, the, and of course this is my Corellian sound font, which was designed with Corrin Horn in mind. I'll see if I can actually activate the, um, Of course, that's in there because Cornhorn can draw the energy from blasters and like, do that again. Yeah, anyways. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being excited about my news. I hope you're as excited about this new Sabre design. New, it's both new and old. Wow, it works on so many levels. Um, I'm just gonna talk about blade plugs and all kinds of other stuff eh, next time. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, this has been another exciting episode of Live in the Shop. Uh, stay safe, stay home, and I will see you next time. Cheers.